Hello, I'm Julie Malcolm and this is my story concerning my relationship with Stocks and Securities Limited, SSL, and to what extent that relationship mirrors the relationship I have with the Jamaica Money Market Brokers, JMMB. So I joined SSL sometime in 2018. Um, I was a full-time grad student. It was a vision board activity and I decided that I would start trading stocks before the new year came in. And so I did. I pulled together all that I had. It wasn't a million dollars. I'm a full-time student after all. So I put together what I had and I bought some stocks. At the time, Fontana was the stock to buy. It was doing extremely well. And I actually shopped at Fontana and I was like, yeah, you buy stocks in the companies that, from the companies that you actually buy from. So at least, you know, they're getting your money too, you know. And... And so I purchased some Fontana stocks. Forgot about it, left it alone. Because sometimes in order to save money, you need to forget that you have money, right? Uh, maybe about two years later, I decided to invest in additional stocks from another entity. And so externally, I acquired those stocks, but it was using my credentials created from within SSL. When I checked online on the first day of trading, because uh, I was keeping abreast of what was happening through the Jamaica Stock Exchange, I recognized that I could not access my online account with SSL. So I reached out to them and they were like, oh, okay, um, we changed your, wait for it, <laughs> we changed your account number we changed your password as well i asked for them to send me the changes online they did via email i accessed the account the fontana stocks i think were there but what was odd i specifically remember this was the first day of trading and the new stocks that i had acquired were nowhere in my account they were just not there and everybody buying and selling and buying and selling and you know they were just not there and as a new investor a young investor a small investor you know you want to see you want to see things happening you want to see you want to access your account and see what's happening but it was it wasn't there so i reached out to ssl uh the telephone calls very few of them went through there was that did were handled by uh, customer service representatives who told me that their contact information had changed. <laughs> their telephone number, the same telephone number that they were speaking with me via on was changed. And the email address for the company was changed. And I, I have some bounced emails from them. I'll put them somewhere here um, for you to see. And so that was a challenge. I kept calling. If you know anything about me, I am I'm determined, very determined. So I kept reaching out to them until eventually somebody picked up the phone and transferred me to a young lady whom I had never, with whom I had never spoken. I can't recall her name at this moment. I'm sure it's in one or, one or, one or two of the emails. And we, we communicated back and forth until eventually my stocks arrived in my account. My stocks arrived in my account. But not long after that, my stocks were transferred from my account. My stocks, I woke up one morning to my account balance being six Jamaican dollars and some cents six Jamaican dollars and some cents and it continued like that for weeks then I received a statement that said my stocks the newly acquired stocks that were purchased using US dollars had been converted to Jamaican currency and were transferred from my account so of course I called SSL again and I was like show me an email from me where I authorized you to touch my resources. Point me to a telephone conversation. I didn't have telephone indemnity with them. 
show me a video recording of me standing in your office, sitting in a meeting with you, authorizing you to do such a transfer. Because up to that point, and even to date, Stocks and Securities Limited cannot tell me who requested the transfer of my stocks, who authorized the conversion and transfer of my stocks, and to whom the stocks were transferred. Instead, what I got was information stating that their telephone numbers had changed, their email address had changed, and there was no way for me to contact them. And while that was happening, on my electronic device, I kept receiving notifications every, was, was it every 10 minutes, every, oh, I don't remember, but there was a set period within which I would get consistent notifications telling me to log into an email account that was attached to my SSL account. I was required to log into my email account in order to access my emails. I was using a device and accessing the very email that they claimed I was locked out of. And so I didn't. All I did was to screen grab the recordings and send them to the security authorities who did nothing. who did absolutely nothing. And that was when I walked into JMMB. Oh, before I segue to JMMB, I also noted that at one point, Fontana was releasing dividends and I had not received any. I still have not received any. I've done the documentation, reached out to, um, Jamaica Stock Exchange reached out to SSL. So the dividends were released, but they were not released to my account. I did not receive any. If they have released it since the last time I checked, then I don't know. But I checked for several months, well over a year. And it was just not there, it was gone. And that is similar to my relationship with JMMB because on the day I opened multiple accounts and began my JMMB relationship, I remember completing a dividend mandate form instructing JMMB regarding how my dividends were to, were to be sent to me, which account, and how it should be handled. When I reached out to Jamaica Stock Exchange and asked them why everybody else was receiving their dividends from a particular stock that I had purchased, and transferred to JMMB, Jamaica Stock Exchange told me in writing that Jamaica Money Market Brokers did not submit any dividend mandate form for me at all. And I completed the dividend mandate form and submitted it to Miss Christine Benjamin, the Financial Solutions Manager from JMMB. So like SSL, my account, JMMB changed my account number. Like SSL, JMMB refused to communicate in a way that would resolve any security concerns that I would have had as a new customer. Like SSL, my dividends were up in the air. Like SSL, my stocks were in limbo for quite a while at JMMB. And so it it leads me to this question. Is there any financial entity within Jamaica where a uh, Jamaican can go and trade stocks and not have them disappear, for want of a better word? And, and you might wonder then, if that happened to you at SSL, why didn't you act sooner at, at JMMB? I think I acted within the first couple of days, the first one to three days. And even while I was going through it, I kept telling myself, oh, Julie, you are experiencing trauma. That is leading to mistrust. These are experts. They know what they're doing. You are seeing red flags where there are none because the trauma from the SSL experience is manifesting as anxiety and, you know, all of that. But there was something in my gut that told me that something was wrong and so I pursued it. 
there is really no difference between my experience at SSL and my experience at JMMB. And so I ask you, like this video, share this video. If you are viewing this video from my YouTube channel, Share Julie's Story, subscribe to that channel because subsequent, I mean, other videos would be uploaded regarding other financial institutions in Jamaica, my relationship with them, and other stories related to other matters that would be of concern to the public. I am not the only Jamaican who is, exper who is experiencing this. It's happening too frequently. It's happening so seamlessly. It's happening while people are turning a blind eye to it. I'm not the only one who is going through it. Who else put them little much somewhere in our account for one rainy day? And just have all the faith in the world that it is there. And nobody is using their accounts. Because when you think about criminal activities, I don't know who else would be using my accounts to cleanse unclean funds. I don't know what risks I am being exposed to. But SSL, JMMB, Uno can't stay so. Uno need for change. Like, share, subscribe. Mocha, Financial Investigations Division, Fraud Squad. Act on this video. Please. I'm Julie Malcolm and... This is my story.